Jesus is alive and well and constantly on the move. Join him in what he's doing. I'm Mariah Berryhill and this is Mission Messiah. customers came in and didn't know about WOW so we got to tell them a little bit about that and just where what it represents and then also a bilingual customer was there so I got to speak a little bit of Spanish and that made it just made me feel good and valued and just feeling the father to know that um, I am loved and I you know I do have the qualities that he is you know wanting me to fulfill and just to not be in fear like we we have been delivered from all those spirits Amen. and cleansed for god to fill those those empty holes with him and for me i was letting the enemy um scare me with fear from what had happened and just having the father encourage me and know that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world and come on <laughs> Diving in. Now I've had the privilege of teaching lessons out here for about eight years. And so this pool's real special to my heart. Yeah. But most of all, I just w love to look out and see kids that today are swimmers. Yeah. And that's, but that, guess how you learn to swim? By faith. By faith. By faith. You learn that you're going to float by faith. You don't know it just because you know it. That's right. That you learn it by faith. You know, there's a little girl that lives at camp and she is she has been afraid of water and afraid of water and afraid of water and this summer her mother took her down you know to to lubbock to teach her how to swim she needed to learn how to swim because we don't have a pool in the mountains she needed to learn how to swim she was so afraid and so afraid and so afraid and one night they prayed together that jesus would take the fear from her and the next morning and this is a this is a three-year-old girl the next morning she dived in the deep end oh. <laughs> but you know she dived in the deep end I love that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but yes, a power right. and of love and a sound mind. Exactly. Always let your faith be bigger than your fear. And I have believed my whole life that you cannot have faith and fear. You've got to give one up. You want me to dunk you? No. I, I really do want not to. want you to dunk me. I want to so I'm happy to push you in. <laughs> you know, after my husband died, it was Tammy that that refreshed me. It was Tammy that brought to me the living water of Christ again. Because when you're in the middle of so much pain, it is so hard to remember that Christ is the living water. Sometimes it is hard. And, and Tammy brought it back to me. And as soon as I, I told me, just put your faith back where it belongs. And Jesus, and only Jesus will get you through this. And, and he did. And, and he has. And he's always our fresh drink of water. Always. And that's what we can be to each other. That's what we can be to all of these children. We can live our lives. You can live your life as that fresh drink of water to the very next person that you run into. It's really not hard to engage with people in the marketplace. I believe the key is, is that we are having our time with the Lord, knowing that He said that we should be praying without ceasing. 
And as we're doing that, you see we're interacting with the Lord and then we're hearing and seeing the opportunities that he's affording us to engage with individuals. Just like that, there was a nice man just a moment ago, Brent and I were doing, filming a little shot, and the guy called us over, wanted to know what we were doing, and then uh, uh, shared something with me that he thought might help us. And you know what? Thank God that that man would have that kind of boldness. Wade, you were probably positioned here for today's purpose. So who are you with? I'm from Louisiana, so. Uh, well, uh, Wade, we're, we have a ministry for women and children, uh, but out of that, we develop businesses for them to train in, support their babies. And then we, about two and a half years ago, we developed a television program to share with people how God is true to His Word, how if we will apply it, it really changes lives. And that's what we've seen for 22 years as we've worked in these ladies and babies' lives. And so the Lord put on our heart, tell the world. Well, this little show now is in all 195 nations on the earth. But you know what made it so palatable? He was so gentle and kind in his approach. And that is one lesson for all of us in engaging. The Lord bless you and, and thank you for your boldness and your <laughs> kindness. Kindness, gentleness, makes us approachable. The Lord bless you. Hello. Hi. Yes, Amanda. And where are you from? I'm from Pecos. Okay. Well, thank you for calling in today. What What is your question? I am really having a hard time with unforgiveness, and I need to know a little bit how I can walk through this. Okay. Brenda, do you want to start with this young lady? Um, let me guess. The enemy keeps bringing up the same old truths, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, I'll answer that from my own experience. And I really struggled with that in a very difficult situation um, where I had been, um, I guess, offended. <laughs> And the truth of the matter was, there, um, every lie that the enemy could tell me, I couldn't disagree with him. Mm. And so it was very hard for me to find the way of escape and move into forgiveness uh, with that person because there wasn't anything that he could say to me that wasn't true. Um, and this is kind of, I kind of answered it uh, with another caller recently in a similar fashion but it's very relative, um, I think, to forgiveness, and that is to stay focused on the greater truths of God's Word. And it took me about three years to figure that one out in prayer. And um, that he, I, I knew He had provided a way, but I couldn't see it until I began to focus on those bigger uh, truths and not just the things that kept me stuck in my feelings and... Um, going back to the situation constantly and feeling the pain of that. Um, so as I begin to focus on those things, uh, that would set the enemy to flight. And I found the freedom that uh, comes through forgiveness. So, Amen. Amen. You and you know, do, what, do you have something to add? Well, I, I was just going to say, you know, one of the thir first things that we have to understand uh, according to the word, and you've heard us say this before, but but Jesus is very clear that that except we forgive, we can't receive the forgiveness that we need. And I think if we understand even the love of God in His forgiveness, then we want that to operate in our lives towards the other party. Because to, to hold on to unforgiveness honestly is a trick of the enemy to keep us in bondage. And Jesus knows that we must be free if we are going to be and become and have the relationships that he wants us to have. So 
you know, I, I like to look at the very positive reasons that Jesus has laid down as to why we would forgive. It gives us life. It gives life, whereas unforgiveness will absolutely manifest in ultimate death. Well, and I think the enemy would um, rather keep us tied up with something like unforgiveness than just kill us. Absolutely. I think he uh, relishes in that. Yeah. It's, it's, and that's what unforgiveness does. It keeps us tied up yeah. and not the other person. Yeah. Which is kind of like the little story I remember as a little boy of Tar Baby. Burr Rabbit and Tar Baby. But you know, you, get, you, that's a you, good want, example. you want to get a hold of that person and what they have done and, and they're covered in tar and you just get stuck. And then you start trying to get that's loose good. And the more you try to get loose, the more tar you get on you and the more stuck you are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good so, example. Thank you for talking to me thank today. Thank you for calling in and we pray blessings for you. Amen. And absolute freedom. forgiveness and freedom Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank you. Bless you. It's Mission Moments, and I'm, I'm really blessed today. I just grabbed Lena Kay, and uh, Lena Kay was just telling me, I said, Lena Kay, actually now, how long have you been at the mission? And what'd you tell me? Um, in 10 days, it'll be 16 months. 16 months. Well, I'm gonna have to go ahead and confess before somebody else tells <laughs> Lena Kay uh, what I said about her this morning in Growing Kids God's Way, but I was oh, really? teaching <laughs> Were yours, Marty? No. Uh, I but was. Uh, let's hear it. I, I was talking to the girls, and we have three new ladies uh, that have just arrived in the last week, I guess. And uh, I was, I was just telling them about different individuals and how God does this amazing transformation. But I couldn't help but tell them because I was saying, "What do you think?" Because they were, they were just in awe at, at uh, Leanna's wisdom. What, what she's sharing with them already. And I said, really? that's awesome. I said, well, you're gonna see a lot of that. What do you think about Haley? What do you think about Lena Kay? What do you think about Maribel? And, <laughs> and so I said, but I just wanna tell you, Lena Kay wasn't always like that. <laughs> no, I wasn't. What were you like when you first got to the mission? Whew. Um, broken. I couldn't sit still. I uh, was lost, and um, I lacked truth. I lacked anything that was real or true. Um, everything I had ever known really was, and felt like a complete lie, or like it led me astray. Um, I did not have a firm foundation at all. Um, sometimes it's hard to even look back to who I was or um, how it felt because of the healing and the restoration and just the redemption power of the Lord. I can see it though in the other women. You can see a girl struggling right off, you know, where they sit from the beginning of the day. You have to feel for them. You immediately start feeling for them, but you can't let it change your actions or um, your responsibilities. I have been in new waters lately um, altogether. I think I'm still, uh, Learning to navigate. <laughs> Learning to navigate them. Like Melissa's been struggling in the last few days. Um, the father's been healing really painful areas in her and I can see that. So I can go to her and I can talk to her, disciple her, counsel her, come down on her level. Uh, and, and then she sees where I'm coming from and then I can you know, use a piece of my testimony a lot of the times you know, to gain their trust or to gain their um, attention. So, you know, you just have to be aware where the enemy's trying to pull someone down. You have to be aware of that and you have to fight back with the Word of God. We just made this huge jump in our conversation mm -hmm. all the way from what you were like when you started and now, wow, we're up here and you literally are coaching and mentoring and encouraging new ladies. Yeah. How, how do we get from back over here, Lena, over here? 
He has given me life in the middle of that. He's given How me life. How did he give you life? Truth, the word of God, patience. You had patience with me. You didn't. Um, you didn't hit me. You didn't. You know, lock me in my room. You didn't um, put me in jail and throw away the key. You didn't do any of those things. You just, you persevered in truth and in love. Um, you would always just take a step back, and and I can see the love of God in you. Take that step back and have that patience with me, and be like, well, Lena. This is the truth. Even Mariah would do that with me. Mm -hmm. Lena, let's break this down. Let's put truth to it. And um, so in those moments where you were patient and forbearing and long-suffering, the Lord imparted life. Yeah. And it began to come alive in me. And uh, so His Word, His truth became, I use fabricate because that's one of my words. He began to fabricate. Because you're also a fabricator. Yes. He became to fabricate um, a new way. Gotcha. A new way. So, Lena, instead of getting upset, what's the Father putting on your heart? The first question you set down, what's on your heart, Lena? You know, instead of, uh, so who made you mad today? Or what's wrong today? You know, we sat here and talked about where life is being okay. imparted. You know, what's the, what's the Lord, how's He putting life into you right now? Well, I'm watching these women get imparted life, Amen. get healing, Amen. get restoration with their children. Amen. So I, you know, I take all these truths because, uh, and I put them with the faith I have, like there's, I know better that there is another way of living life than oh, let's just go drink this feeling away, or um, let's just, um, anything that's negative, um, we have to replace it with a positive. And um, so I'm still learning those things, especially with the girls. I can't react. I have to take that patience and put life into it. And a lot of the times it's the Word of God. Amen. Woo! Girl, that's good <laughs> stuff. How about a hug? I love this man. I love He's this good. girl.
wife came over, uh, had been listening to the speaker, and she said, Jamie, you will not believe the, the word that I just heard. And next thing I know, she has the speaker that she was talking about, Paul Angoni. Thank you. It's Paul, an honor thank to be you here. for being hey, here. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. glad this worked out. Well, Paul, uh, how is it that you got connected to the summit? Yeah. Well, actually, it was just good friends that I have and, you know, and, and supporting them and supporting their work. And they've been supporting mine and just a fan of what the summit's about. And, okay. Um, and being a voice to a generation, that's kind of my goal. So That's I, what I was going to say. Yeah. So you want to. You want to tell our viewers a little bit about what this call on your life is about. Yeah, I have a real passion for millennials, for 20-somethings, for those who are confused or going through transition, uh, who feel like they're failing in their 20s, because I felt like such a failure And so in my why 20s. do you think that that seems to be so rampant in this hour? You know, I think because there's so much pressure, first of all, to succeed, to make a difference, to do something big, especially in today's social media world, right. where it looks like everybody's doing these amazing things. Right. And in my book, 101 Secrets to Your 20s, I define it as... I just happen to have... Well, there uh, you go. What are the chances? Of, huh? What are the chances? <laughs> um, I define it as a different kind of OCD. I call it obsessive comparison disorder. Woo. Yeah. Wow. Did you know uh, that that word is in Scripture? And yes. I look at it closely. The word says, Paul said clearly, do not compare yourselves with others, yeah. but compare yourself against the word of God. Exactly. And comparison's been around since the beginning of time. You know, and I actually like, you know, examples of the disciples, you know, they're with Jesus and they're, what, what are they doing? They're comparing each other. Who's the greatest? Who's the best? You exactly. know, they, they're there with Jesus and they're still playing the comparison exactly. game. He's going, now, guys. With, with social media, you know, the disciples, they would have been on Twitter and Facebook arguing with each other probably about well, it. There you go. Which is what we're doing yeah. now. And so. But the, we know what Jesus said, didn't he? Yes. What did he say? Who will be greatest among you? Yeah. The servant to all. Yeah. Amen. And so, yeah, I, I, what it does is it, it creates a false environment. Uh, uh, everybody putting PR spins on how successful their life is when maybe they're struggling. And I right. think a lot of millennials are struggling. And, and what I say is that we're all struggling, but we're all struggling to make it appear like we're not struggling. And that becomes a real isolating uh, factor uh, where millennials are, are maybe scared to have an open conversation, maybe scared to even talk to their parents or their boss to say, I don't have it figured out because they feel like they got to project this too good to be true image. There you go. And so it's blocking authentic conversation. So let me ask this, Paul. What is, give me, give me, Three things right now that yeah. you would recommend to that age, because we work yeah. with a lot of that age yeah. and Mission Messiah. Mission Messiah Television is positive television to enhance your life. A true non-scripted reality show that features life lessons, unforgettable real life success stories, and interviews with local heroes, national movers and shakers, and international celebrities, all united by their love for Jesus Christ. Mission Messiah Television gives real answers to life's toughest problems. It's positive television to enhance your life. Watch Mission Messiah Television today. Yeah. What do you tell them? Well, I tell them, one, you're not alone. Because that's okay. the email I get the most, is, is I feel so alone. I, th I thought I was the only one going through this. And then they find my website or my books, and they're right. like, oh, thank you for mentioning this because I thought I was the only one struggling. Right. So it's one, you're not alone. Two, you're going to fail. That's an important part of your 20s. Oh, it's an important part of life. Life. But when you fail, don't begin calling yourself a failure. Exactly. Don't begin calling, you know, bringing on that name and feeling like, well, I'm not enough. I'm not worth enough. You know, really having your worth be based on your perceived and, and, and success. And isn't that exactly what the enemy of our soul desires to it manifest and is. establish a stronghold in a person's it mind? It is. It's that lie that will keep coming over you saying, well, you know, who are you to do this? Who are you to have big dreams or hopes or believe you are something? You right. know, so you got to put down those lies and mm -hmm. then realize that it's a part of the process. And so... Um, Success in your, ta your your 20s is really about setting the table more than about enjoying the feast. Ooh, did you hear that? Setting the table more than enjoying yeah. the feast. And, and, and that's why I wrote my newest book, The 100. So, so give us just a little yeah. short exposition on what that means. Well, that means it's, you know, it's, let's take it to a farming metaphor. You know, my, okay. my relatives are all Kansas farmers. Oh, all right. You know, and, and that's what I'll tell millennial, you know, and my relatives weren't planting avocado seeds, but I, but I put it in avocado seed terms. That pursuing a dream is like planting an avocado seed. Okay. It's gonna take about 10 years, but only if you stay consistent and water it and feed the ground. And then Consistency. You're, and then you're trusting that life is being sparked underneath. You know, that gotcha. God is doing stuff underground that you don't even see, that you, it, can, it, you won't picture yet. Is that called faith? That, exactly, <laughs> and then having that hope. You know, the hope for things unseen, that, that, yes. that 
something's taking place, but you got to stay consistent, humble, perseverance. A those kind of tried and true. So that's wow. why my new book, 101 Questions for Your Which 20s, one is it? That's the yellow one. That's the yellow book. It's really kind of a, a field guide, a manual. It's, it's not me giving you the answers. It's asking really strategic questions so that somebody can say, oh, let me put some words to that so I can start right. being intentional about the seeds that I'm planting, about the life that I'm living, about what I call your signature sauce. Gotcha. You know, that unique flavor that you have. About that, you, that, that God given. Need, that people need, right? Yeah, that we've been created with these unique ingredients that doesn't make us narcissistic, narcissistic but are important to our calling. Absolutely. And, and we need that flavor. We, the we, world needs that. It does. And, and you know, I, you hear me say it often, but yeah. the body's made of many members fitly joined together by that which every joint and ligament supply it. Exactly. Even under the edifying of itself in love. So that's what Paul's saying right here. Every one of us, every one of you have a God-given divine purpose. Exactly. Bring it to the light. Exactly. And you're that master chef in the kitchen. And you're going to be putting ingredients together. And a lot of them are going to go up in flames. I love it. And they're going to be burnt on the bottom of the pot. <laughs> and you're not going to want to show anybody that. Right. You know? But, but it's okay. But that's, again, part of the process. You know? Exactly. And, and that's a part of, okay, now I'm one step closer. You know, I've crossed one thing off the list. Amen. And God has a plan for me. God has yes. a purpose for me. And if, even if I can't see it right now. Gotcha. To just hone in on that. Because you're not alone. You know? And I keep Praise going back to that. Because when you feel isolated... That's the scary thing. When you feel like I can't share this with anybody. Right. You know, we're all struggling, but we're all struggling to make it look yeah. like we're not struggling. So. so, it's a lie to think if you're the only one. Exactly. Amen. You're Paul, not. what a blessing. Thank you.